hello guys and welcome back to my channel in this video I'll be showing you how to create a bouncing Super Mario running on the Super Nintendo stay tuned alright to begin with we have our sprites our first sprite is a blank sprite which contains absolutely no graphics this is used to supplement sprites which aren't going to be shown on the screen and then finally we have our Mario sprite let's just finish him off there you go now we have our Mario sprite and our blank sprite we can both we can save them both and export their PNGs now that we've done that let's have a look at the code Alright, before we look at the code, let's have a quick look at how we can export these sprites into a format which the Super Nintendo understands. I've written a program called PNG to SNES. Now there's many tools out there available for converting images, BMP, PNG and so forth into formats which the Super Nintendo understands. Now I've written my own tool because I couldn't find exactly what I wanted out there. So let's have a quick look on how to use this tool called PNG to SNES. By the way, the link to the executable will be in the video description. Alright, first of all, we give the actual executable name, which is PNG to SNES. Then we give the, the directory in which the sprite is located. When we hit enter, this will create two files for us. One is the actual sprite pixels in Super Nintendo format and one is the palette for the Super Nintendo now we've exported the sprite let's do that for the blank sprite as well now they're both exported we won't be using the blank.pal but it's been exported for us anyway if we look in the folder which we ran the program on we'll see that it's created a blank.pal a blank.pix a sprite.pal and a sprite.pix like I said before we won't be using a blank.pal so we can delete this now let's look at how we would import this into our code alright our next step is to analyze the code to see how we import the sprites so the Super Nintendo can display them I'm using code blocks editor in this example but you can use whichever editor you want first thing I'm going to do I'm going to create a new project file new project create an empty project click go specify the folder in which you want to create your project and type in the project name I'm going to call this bouncing Mario next and click the compiler option click no compiler and finish now right click on the bouncing Mario and click add files find the assembler file called main.sm again these files will be included in the video description and expand the source code and double click on the source file this is the source file for the entire program uh, it contains the code for loading the sprite into memory loading the palette into memory loading the the tile, file, tile information or the map information into memory of the Super Nintendo if we scroll to the bottom here we'll see three different includes these includes tell the compiler or the assembler in this case to include these files we exported into the actual ROM information so I've got the three files here I've got the sprite that picks the blank.pix and the sprite.pal if we go up in the source file we'll find the copy pixels procedure highlighted so far in this procedure we first of all set the VRAM address locations to zero by store zero command next we upload the blank sprite into the VRAM of the Super Nintendo we then upload the Super Mario sprite into the VRAM in the next location as you can see the size of the Super Mario sprite is 128 bytes 
and the size of the blank sprite is 32 bytes. After we've uploaded the sprites, we now need to upload the palette. This procedure here uploads the palette to the CG RAM of the Super Nintendo. Let's have a quick look. We set the starting location of the CG RAM as such. Then we load data from the sprite palette and upload that and store that into the CG data register. There's 128 bytes in this entry, so that's why it needs to loop 128 times. After we've uploaded both the sprites and the palette, we now have to look at how we're storing the sprite X and Y locations. At the top of the file in the segment labeled BSS, we have sprites X and sprites Y. These are just two RAM locations, 128 bytes each, which hold the X and Y location for our sprites. If we go down to the procedure labeled in it all, we will see there's two loops and what happens in these loops is that it stores zero in all of these RAM locations. The next is to set up the sprite for Mario, labeled sprite in it head. These locations are at the center of the screen. Because the Super Mario sprite is 16 by 16 pixels wide, we have four sprites, each 8 by 8. So we center the sprite on the screen. The final thing we need to do is to copy the actual object attribute memory telling the Super Nintendo which tile to use for which sprite, which palette to use for which sprite. So that's what we do here. Sprite copy OEM. First of all, we set the high and low registers to zero. The next loop is the loop main. This sets the sprite X locations that we set before into the register, the sprite Y locations into the register. We transfer X to A, meaning that we were counting how many sprites we've uploaded, we've uh, configured so far. Next we store the sprite index. The first index sprite is the blank sprite, as, as we've uploaded before. So we have to count from 1. Our first sprite index is 1, that's why we have an ink here. After we've configured the Mario sprite, we then have to set all the remaining sprites to the blank sprite, otherwise we get garbage on the screen. So this loop, loop blank, that's what it does. It loops until 128 sprites, which is the maximum the Super Nintendo can display, and it stores zero in all the object attribute memory locations. Finally, we have the logic to move the sprite on the screen. You can check this code out for yourself. And here, in the reset handler, which is like the main, if you're used to C programming, is the actual main body of the code. In this final area, we look at the main loop of the code. The main loop comprises of an update move, an update toggle, and copy OEM. What these functions do respectfully is to move Mario on the screen, to update when he bounces on the walls, and to copy the new sprite XY locations to the object attribute memory. There's another file I want to show you, which is called memmap.cfg. In memmap.cfg, there's very important information for the segments. Up here, we specify the RAM location for the Super Nintendo. The starting address for the RAM in Super Nintendo is 7E, followed by zeros and it's 128 kilobytes. Here in the segments we tell the, the code that for BSS we load into RAM specified by those locations. 
So when we go in our code and we need to specify variables, before we specify these variables which we can modify, we have to specify that the segment is BSS. Finally, let's have a look at the batch file used to compile the code. It's called make.bat. If we open make.bat, we see two lines. These give instructions to the assembler and the linker on how to assemble our ROM. Our final ROM will be called game.sfc. If we open a command prompt to the location of where our make file make.bat is located and type make and hit enter, we will see that the commands have been run and our program has compiled successfully. Next, let's go into our emulator and load our actual newly built game.sfc. And there you have it, a bouncing Mario. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.